Hello students, welcome to today's class. The topic of the today's lecture is early beginnings of food producing communities in South Asia. This topic is one of the series of lectures which I have delivered on the topic Neolithic cultures. Since Neolithic culture is known for the production of agriculture, domestication of plants and animals, growth of different arts and crafts and the village settlements. In the earlier lectures, we have looked at the scenario in the world context and today we are going to focus the development of these activities in South Asian context. There are certain objectives of the study and after going through today's lecture, you will be able to understand the beginnings of early food production in the context of South Asia. You have an idea about various localities of South Asia, those which started practicing agricultural activities. You will be able to map the differences in the toolkits of early farmers of South Asia. And then you will be able to have a look at the varieties of food grains that were at disposal to the Neolithic societies of South Asia. The issue of domestication of plants and animals by early humans of South Asia is a question which is dealt by many historians and archaeologists. A large number of source material is at our disposal at present to highlight many issues which are related to the presence of earliest series of domesticated plants and animals from many archaeological sites of South Asia. But before moving to the actual details, let us first have a look on some of the prominent archaeological sources which throw light on it. And evidence of sedentism or habitation in the form of dwellings, hearths, storage pits, burials, etc. and tools which are associated with food production, flora and fauna analysis, that is the identification of flora which means seeds and fauna which means teeth, bones, etc. as that of domesticates emerge from the archaeological explorations and excavations as our primary source. The image of self-sufficient settlements is completed by evidence of craft activity such as ceramics, bead making and even spinning. While people still engaged in these activities, they began to rely less on wild animals and more on the domesticated series or species as time progressed. The concept of agriculture in India was long thought to have been imported from Mesopotamia via the Iranian plateau. It is now widely accepted, however, that agriculture in India was not imported from elsewhere but rather developed independently and locally. Barley and wheat are the only two grains for which there is conclusive evidence from Mehargad, which is located in Balochistan, where the two earliest Neolithic layers have been dated to somewhere between the 8th and the 6th millennia BCE. The data for both rice and millets remains ambiguous and inconclusive. On the other hand, there is a growing school of thought that sees the Vindian border of the middle Ganga plain as the westernmost margin of a separate rice producing zone in India. The abundance of wild rice in this region as well as the discovery of rice at sites which date back to Mesolithic period at Damdama and at Kaldeva which goes back to 7 to 6 millennium BCE and at Lahuradeva which goes back to 7th to 5th millennium BCE suggest that rice domestication may have occurred here much earlier than previously thought. The evolution of food production in India spanned several millennia from the 8th millennium BCE to around 1000 BCE. The widespread nature and origins of the Neolithic in the subcontinent have only recently been uncovered thanks to the intensive explorations and the excavations. Research scholars like Arish Sharma classify Neolithic communities into the western, eastern and southern regions according to the predominant stone tool technology of the timers. 
Some other scholars, such as B. K. Thapar, identify six distinct regions within the same geographical area. Number one is the north, which includes the Kashmir Valley. Number second is the Balen Valley, which includes the districts of Allahabad, Mirzapur, Riva, and Sidhi in the Indian Plateau. Number third is the northern Bihar. Number four is the Assam and sub-Himalayan regions of the Far East. Number five is southern, including the peninsula of India. And number six is the central eastern, including the Chota Nagpur Plateau and neighboring territories in West Bengal and Odisha. Even in India, the Neolithic period did not manifest itself consistently. There is no single center origin, no domino or ripple effect that spreads local effects to other locations. Rice, wheat, barley, maize and millet were all tried out depending on the availability and several stages like the Neolithic, Chalcolithic and Neolithic Chalcolithic which emerged and often coexisted. There was no universal synchronization to their emergence or decline. And many Neolithic societies really existed side by side with the urban copper bronze Harappan civilization. In addition to diverging historical trajectories, these societies also display subtle geographical distinctions. The discovery of Neolithic tools in the Northeast, for instance, does not by itself prove that plants were cultivated there. Whereas most Neolithic communities are thought to have sprung from the Mesolithic ones, however, the Kashmir Valley provides no such evidence. Bone tools have only been found at sites in Kashmir and Chirand in Bihar. In Mehargad, which is located in the Pakistan, people mostly eat wheat and barley. But rice was grown in central India and millet or ragi was grown at Neolithic sites in the southern part of India. Now let us look at the borderlands of the northwestern India. Pakistan is Balochistan province and the Indus Plains emerged as significant areas in this region where farming and animal husbandry began in the Neolithic period. Even though Balochistan is mostly an inhospitable mountainous territory with a climate of extremes, many remnants of early communities have been unearthed in the valley pockets. Important sites include, for example, Mehargad, which is in the Kachi Plain, then Kili Gul Muhammad in the Kwaita Valley, Rana Gundai in the Loralai Valley, and Anjira in the Surab Valley. The archaeological landscape of the Indus Plains is very different from that of Balochistan. Gumla, Rahman Deri, Tarakai Kila, and Sarai Khola are just a few of the Neolithic settlements discovered in the northwest frontier province. The province of Punjab is home to several significant archaeological sites, including Harappa and Jalilpur. Now let us look at some individual archaeological sites in the geographical regions of South Asia and we'll try to gauge the actual output in terms of the Neolithic revolution. And first we'll be talking about Mehargad. Mehargad located on the Boran River in the Kachi Plain of Balochistan is where the first traces of a subcontinental agricultural lifestyle centered on wheat, barley, cattle, sheep and goat. The approximate date of the site is 7000 BC. Even while this style of agriculture only appears to have been in Balochistan for the following two to three millennia, it has expanded throughout the region's major areas by the end of this time period. Village life in the region expanded and became more stable throughout time as evidenced by the excavations. There are seven periods of occupation at the site, although only the first three, that is from period 1 to period 3, are considered to be Neolithic. The time frame for each of these is as follows. Period 1 stretches from 7000 to 6000 BCE. Period 2nd 
from 6000 to 4500 BCE and period 3rd from 4500 to 3500 BCE. Period 1 which is the first stage of human settlement coincides with the shift from nomadic pastoralism to the settled agriculture in this region. It is an aceramic level featuring polished axes, chisels, kernels and microliths as well as owls, needles and other bone tools. The site's Neolithic nature may be inferred from cow, sheep and goat bones showing their domestication as well as water buffalo bones, the oldest evidence of domestication in the subcontinent. Charred wheat, barley, jujube or beer and dates show plant domestication. Foundations of mud brick dwellings and narrow cell-like divisions suggest the start of sedentary lifestyle at the site. The most startling fact, however, may be related to long-distance trade and craft production. Beads of lapis lazuli were discovered, likely mined from the Badakhshan region of Afghanistan, and shell bangles were made from seashells which were collected from the Arabian Sea shore. This proves without a reasonable doubt that the inhabitants of Mehargad during the Neolithic period 1 were not a culturally isolated group but rather actively sought out contact with other societies of the time. During the second period of occupation, the economy expanded and diversified. In the lowest levels of this period, crude handmade pottery becomes abundant and towards the end of this period, that is period second, wheel made and painted as well as basket market shirts are found having parallels with those found at Kili Gul Muhammad period 1 in the Kwaita Valley. The homes get bigger and granaries were also introduced by this time. Chaired cotton seeds indicate cotton plantation and probably spinning and weaving crafts. Ivory making inferred from an elephant trunk with groove marks, terracotta human figurines, a steatite workshop and lapis lazuli and turquoise beads all indicate the levels of craft production, commerce and the Neolithic stage of human evolution. The Neolithic period at Mehrgad comes to close with period 3rd, which lasts from around 4500 to 3500 BCE. The surplus was produced by combining agricultural and livestock rearing efforts. A large quantity of pottery has been discovered by now, and many of the pieces include painted themes that are similar to those of Kili Gul Muhammad 2nd and 3rd period. Laps lazuli, turquoise and conch shell beads indicate long distance commercial continuity. Surface artifacts which were made of copper and copper residues in crucibles. This indicates that the Neolithic inhabitants of the Mehargar likely experienced with the copper smelting. Multiple mass burials dating to this time period further support the idea of a city daily expanding village life and the growth of population. Now coming to another important settlement in the northwestern frontier province, now we'll be talking about the Kili Gul Muhammad, which is a very important Neolithic settlement. Kili Gul Muhammad is located in the Kwaita Valley. The earliest three stages of the site were classified as Neolithic and it was first inhabited approximately 5500 BCE when people lived in the wattle and daub and mud homes. Microliths, a few ground tools, bone points and a spatula are among the tools uncovered and the bones of cow, sheep, goat and horse and wild horse were also found. The change from the second to the third period is defined by the shift from the handcrafted basket market pottery to excellent wheel made black on red ware with the basic geometric modifus. Now coming to another settlement, Rana Gundai, which is located in the Anambar Valley. 
in the ecological zone between the Baluchi hills and the Indus plains. The Neolithic periods from 1 to 3rd ranged in duration from about 4500 to 3100 BC. Artifacts from period 1 include handmade basic ceramics as well as the remnants of domesticated animals such as cow, sheep, goat and maybe a wild ass also. Microlithic chips and blades, bone points and eyeball needles all made up a combined stone and bone toolkit. As the Neolithic era became firmly rooted in this area, innovations in ceramic fabric, forms and even patterns were continuously pursued. Now coming to another settlement, Rahman Deri. This is a vast site covering more than 20 hectares, clearly demonstrates the transition from the Neolithic to the Cordigian and then to the Indus civilization period. From the beginning, the site was protected by a mud brick wall. Insights on their diet may be gleaned from the discovery of grains, fish bones and the bones of domesticated cattle, sheep and goat. The majority of the pottery found at the site is decorated with Cordigian mortifice, suggesting the date back to the first settlers. The calibrated date range of Rahman Deri is 3400 to 2100 BCE. A large number of sites above the flood levels of the river Jhelum in the Kashmir Valley are the best examples of the Neolithic cultures that formerly flourished in the northern India. Burzahama, which is located to the northeast of Srinagar and Gafkral to the southeast of Srinagar are the two important and significant archaeological sites belonging to the Neolithic period in Kashmir. Both locations are rich in cultural diversity, beginning with the extensive Neolithic artifacts and continuing through the megalithic and historical periods of occupation. The lack of a microlithic industry or the Mesolithic phase before the Neolithic period, which occurs between 3500 and 1500 BCE, is an essential characteristic feature of the Northern Neolithic. Now let us look at into details what we have from these sites in Kashmir and first we'll be talking about the material culture at Burzahama. Now beginning approximately 2700 BCE, the Neolithic inhabitants of period 1 at Burzahama lived in circular or oval shaped lakeside pit shelters and hunted, fished and practiced agriculture. The sides of the living pits were mud plastered and ladders and stairs were utilized to enter the large pits. Near the habitation pits, storage pits with animal bones, stone and bone implements were discovered and most of the pottery found at the site is coarse and handmade and it is predominantly grey, buff and red. Burzaham bone industry is the most advanced of all the Neolithic societies in India and it includes harpoons, needles, arrowheads, spare joints, etc. Graves of humans and even animals, particularly dogs, have been discovered at the settlement, adding to the area's unique character. Stone slabs, which were recovered during excavations, they depicted the images of hunting and a son and a dog, which provide only corroborating evidence of ritual practices. Two objects from period 2nd, which dates to the 2nd millennium BCE, indicate interaction with the Indus planes. Number one is a pot with carnelian and agate beads, which were thousands in number, and another pot bearing the Cordigian horned deity design, both of them indicate that Kashmir had some sort of relations with the neighboring territories. Now the second important settlement in Kashmir is Gafkral, which literally means the Porter's Cave. And this has produced an evidence of the aceramic Neolithic culture sometime around 3000 BCE. Large habitational pits like at Burzahama, 
together with associated storage pits, hearths and post holes were discovered during the excavation at Gafkral, which date back to period 1A at the site. Domesticated sheep and goat bones coupled with those of barley, wheat and lentil as well as those of wild sheep, goats, cattle, deer, abex, wolf and bear suggest a complete shift from hunting towards domestication and farming. A massive cairn and other polished stone tools were also discovered as were bone from Han implements, steatite beads and a terracotta ball. The Neolithic era reached its peak during periods 1b and 1c at Gafkral as shown by the proliferation of domesticated sheep, goat, cow, dog and pig as well as the development of wheel made pottery from the crude grey ware potteries. Now from North India let us move to the Central India and the mid Gangetic Basin and see what was happening there during the Neolithic times. The Vindhyan and Kaimur hill ranges in Uttar Pradesh and the Madhya Pradesh states of present day India or the region which is bounded by the Ganges to the north and the Son to the south were considered to be the epicenters of the Central Indian Neolithic period. Important Neolithic sites may be found in the districts of Allahabad like Koldiva and Mahagara, then in Mirzapur like Sindhuria, then at Sidhi like Kunjun etc. Even while some researchers have proposed a date of circa 6000 BC for the commencement of the Neolithic culture at Koldiva, others have assigned a date range from 4000 to 2500 or 3500 to 1250 BC for this level. Narhan, which is located on the banks of the Sarayu river, Imlidi, located on the Kuwana stream, Sogara on the banks of the Rapti river, Chirand on the banks of the Kagra river and other locations like Taradi and Senuvar are just a few examples of some of the best Neolithic sites in this region. New evidence about the origin and antiquity of rice in India has emerged from the excavations at the Lahura Deva site in the Uttar Pradesh's Sant Kabir Nagar district. Now let us move into details of some of these archaeological sites and first we'll be talking about Koldiva. Koldiva in the Balin Valley of Uttar Pradesh features an extensive sequence of artifacts from the Paleolithic times to the Mesolithic time. Blades, flakes, polished and ground axes, celtas, kiernas and even pestles show microlithic and neolithic overlap at the site. Cattle, sheep, goat and deer bones provide evidence of animal husbandry while turtle and fish remains show evidence of fission. The oldest level of Koldiva having no metal evidence is where domesticated rice was discovered along with wattel and daub dwellings, polished stone celts, microliths and three distinct types of handmade pottery including cord marker and incisored ware, plain red ware with ochre silk on both sides and crude black and red ware. The site's antiquity is still up for the debate, G. R. Sharma who excavated this settlement estimated dates from approximately 5500 BC. However, many scholars disagree and point a need to re-evaluate the findings. Now let us talk about another important archaeological site and its name is Chirand. And from Chirand, a cultural material ascribed to the Neolithic period was dated in between 2100 and 1400 BCE. This site lies at the confluence of Sarayu and Ganga at the base of one kilometer long hill. And from period one or the Neolithic layer of Chirand, coarse pottery consisting of red, gray and black handmade wares have been found. Wattel and daub dwellings with post holes and hearths were the norm for the human habitation they had to rely on agriculture and domesticated animals for survival. Rice, wheat, barley, mung and lentil 
or all mentioned, which might mean at least two harvests each year were being cultivated, probably in winters and autumns. There are bones from a broad variety of animals, from domesticated cattle to elephants and rhinoceros. The terracotta artifacts discovered thus far include, but are not limited to, sculptures of humped bulls, birds, snakes, bangles, beads, sling balls, and so on. Tools and ornaments made of bone, beads made of semi precious stones, and stone tools, including microliths and neolithic tools like axes, pestles, and kurnas all point to the possibility of craft production and even trade. Now from the central India, let us move to the eastern part of India and see what was happening in those areas. Several significant Neolithic sites may be found in the states of Odisha, in Kochai and Golbai Sasan, and West Bengal at Pandu Raja Debi, Bharatpur, and Mahisadal, as well as in Jharkhand at Barodi. Since there have been no extensive excavations, therefore only a fragmentary picture of the Neolithic way of life is known and dating is also problematic in this area. As far as the South Indian peninsula is concerned, this Neolithic culture which is distributed over the present-day states of Karnataka, Andhra Pradesh, and Tamil Nadu, has produced most of the Neolithic settlements, possibly due to the ready supply of stone. Raichur and Shorapur Dobbs, on the southeastern corner of the Deccan Plateau, and the area between the Bhima River and the Kaveri River, are particularly rich in sites associated with this Neolithic culture. Besides the enormous number of sites, the South Indian Neolithic is notable for its use of ash mounds and its concentration of human habitation on the region's granite plateaus. An ash mound is a large pile of ash that has collected over time from frequent burnings of animal dung. And these sites they have been located at Sanganakulu, Halur, Tikalakota, Brahmagiri. Maski, T. Narsipur, and Piklihal, from where the significant Neolithic remains have been found. In Karnataka, while as Utnur, Palavoy, Kodikal, and Budilhal are noteworthy Neolithic sites in Andhra Pradesh, as well Piyamapalli in Tamil Nadu needs to be mentioned here. The time frame for these locations is calculated by certain archaeologists around 2400 to 1000 BCE. Among these Neolithic sites in South India, mention may be made in detail of some of them. And first, we'll be talking about Sanganakalo. The evidence at Sanganakalo suggests a prolonged human presence dating back to the Paleolithic period. Quartz flakes, cores, and lunates constitute the next stage of the industry after Paleoliths. The traditional Neolithic industry of polished stone tools follows, but not before a sterile dark brown soil emerged at the location, marking a time gap between the Neolithic and the Microlithic or Mesolithic stages. A large quantity of coarse grey and red pottery, either created by hand or on a slow wheel, was also uncovered at the site. Chared grains and the bones of domesticated animals, including cattle, sheep, and goat, have also been found in the storage pits in the area. Coming to another important site, and its name is Piklihal, which is located in the Raichur district of Karnataka, is essentially an ash mound Neolithic settlement. The Neolithic residents were likely herders who raised cattle, sheep, goats, and other domesticated animals. These nomads made temporary settlements each season, enclosing their livestock in pens made of tree trunks or wooden poles and stakes. So concluding the topic where we talked about the development of the food production 
in South Asian context, at the end we can conclude that the beginnings of early food production in South Asia were very important and widespread as far as the geographical locations of the archaeological sites is concerned. The transition from hunting and gathering to the domestication of plants and animals in almost every region of South Asia is clear and visible from the material culture. The centers of farming known from many archaeological sites were highly specialized in the processes of food production and moreover the significant features of Neolithic societies in addition to for example food production like development of arts and crafts and the village settlements is worthy to mention. So this is all what we have to study in the today's topic and I hope you have enjoyed and learnt much from today's lecture. Thank you so much.